I recently bought a pair of turtles in Boston's Chinatown for my dorm room. They're a pair of red-eared sliders about this big, named Turtle D and Turtle Dumb. <laughs> I researched everything about turtles online. What types of tanks and filters to use, how to angle special heat lamps for them, and how to build, build a basking ramp. However, almost immediately after I put Turtle D and Turtle Dumb in their tank, Turtle Dumb ran away. Don't ask me how it happened, it just did. <laughs> Turtles being slow is a complete myth. <laughs> after searching my room multiple times, I gave up. At first, I was upset. Why did Turtle Dumb have to run away when he had such a good home to begin with? Why do you have to do this to me? Why can't he just stay in the tank like Turtle D? <laughs> Talking about it now, I realize how silly these questions are. All animals are naturally curious about their surroundings. It's a trait that has been passed down through many generations. Um, it's a trait that has been passed down through many generations by natural selection, giving species an edge within their environments. Of course, we humans also possess this trait, and it is the reason why we invent cars and computers, discover medicines for deadly diseases, can travel to the moon, and build complex societies. Our natural capacity to wonder and explore is not only healthy for the individual, but helps advance society. But sometime within the last few decades, people seem to have ignored their natural curiosity. For example, how many of you know exactly what happens inside your iPhone or Android? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> One. OK, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> um, so this illustrates what is referred to as the black box syndrome. See, to most of us, the iPhone is just a tool where you press the home button and the screen lights up, or you press numbers on the screen to call someone on the other side of the world. But the newest tech gadgets are just too complex for us to understand, and so many people don't even try to consider how it works. This problem becomes even more prevalent as science and technology advance, dulling our natural curiosity. While some of us just take for granted that we can t Instagram a picture of the latest meal that we're eating, <laughs> others will choose to dig deeper and use these questions to find out more about themselves and their passions. My first passion was actually math. In high school, I took classes at the University of California in Irvine, where I was exposed to many ways in which math could be used in real life problems. I was amazed to see how math, how many things around us could be described using a math model. And I knew I wanted to apply math to these relevant problems in the world. But during my sophomore year in high school, my family and I received some, tra some tragic news. Both my grandparents had been diagnosed with different forms of cancer. Many of us would ask, why did this have to happen to them? And even though I was worried and sad about their health, their diagnosis drove me to ask questions about tumors and tumor growth. I wondered whether I could use math to model tumor growth. And for the remainder of high school, I worked on this model. And the more I worked, the more interested I became in human biology and its systems. Thankfully, my grandparents are still with us today. But their battle with cancer has led me to a new passion to pursue and is the impetus for why I'm a stem cell biology major at Harvard today. Um. <laughs> the thing that interests me the most is the human body, one of the most complex and beautifully designed systems in the world. However, even the most complex and beautifully designed systems do, can and do break down. Over 300 million people worldwide suffer from diabetes, a disease in which 
the body does not metabolize or process food correctly. Not only is it a leading cause of death in America, but it is also the fastest growing disease in the nation. It is also a financial burden, costing the U.S. an estimated $200 billion worldwide, or $200 billion a year, and the diabetic $15,000 annually in healthcare costs. Clearly, this is a disease that needs to be cured. I, like many scientists before me, asked myself, how can I help cure diabetes? Thankfully, I wasn't the only one at Harvard asking this question. I'm part of a small team led by Dr. Melton, who recently discovered a gene called beta-trophin. Beta-trophin helps the body produce insulin, the hormone deficient in diabetics. The team's finding has been hailed as a potential breakthrough for diabetes research. As my part of the contribution to the team, I'm exploring how the body can produce beta-trophin. Given this main question, I asked even smaller questions. For example, how do mice produce beta-trophin? And how can I induce the body to produce beta-trophin with chemical compounds? However, answering each one of these questions leads to even more questions. But those questions will be answered in time. While this may seem like a cycle that could never end, answering each one of these questions, just one of these questions, could lead to a potential cure or new treatment. And that makes it all worth it. Imagine instead of having to inject yourself before every meal, all you had to do was take a pill once a day or see the doctor once a year for a booster. Now imagine how these alternatives could greatly improve the quality of life for the many diabetics worldwide. Now, even if my research only contributes a thousandth of a percent to a potential cure or treatment, I will have helped the lives of thousands of individuals just because there's so many diabetics worldwide. And having such an, such an impact on such a large group of people makes it all worth it. Even though in the future I may not continue diabetes research, this experience has at least solidified my passion for human biology and its systems. Who knows, maybe one day I'll be like Dr. Melton and lead a group of scientists in finding a way to use stem cells to treat different diseases. Although I don't know where my career will lead me, I do know that I'll want to continue to wonder and explore my surroundings. Kind of like turtle down. <laughs> now, many of you, for many of you, science and math just isn't your thing. And that's okay, because there are many problems in this world that need to be solved. Are you into social activism? What kinds of issues in your community could be helped with a local fundraiser? Are you into politics? How can our bipartisan government more effectively collaborate on policymaking? Are you into art and music? Is there a way to innovate art and music production? No matter where your passion lies, it is, there is always some question you can be asking, something you can be exploring. Don't be afraid to don't look at your journey like a black box, thinking there's nothing important inside. And don't be afraid to step outside of your turtle haven <laughs> to keep your natural curiosity alive. No matter what you do, the key is to keep wondering and exploring. Thank you.